Welcome to another episode of Coder Conversation. Today we have special guest Raphael Zubi Zaretta. He's an indie filmmaker, board game maker, and actor. And welcome to the show, man. Thank you, man. Thank you for having me. Oh, man. Glad to have you, man. Uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit about your background? Like, how did you get into uh, making films? Uh, so, yeah, man. Like, you know, I mean, as far back as I can remember, I've always, I've just always loved movies, man. Going back to watching Star Wars as a kid, the original Star Wars, and always being captivated by them and always being able to, I've always just kind of had this, this thing for like, you know, mimicking people's voices and putting on skits and entertaining people and storytelling more than anything else, you know? So, um, you know, that, that started at a pretty young age. And then, um, when I moved to Killeen, Texas in, um, it was around 92, 1992, um, I met many of you, you know, like that's the cool thing about this podcast is the fact that you can like attest for a lot of things that I'm talking mm -hmm. about, you know, like because yeah. we grew up together and, um, uh, we all have we share a lot of the same same friends and um you were there you know for a, a good portion of my creative mm -hmm. uh, things were really were really popping off with uh quest windward spirits and things like that but um but yeah man you know as far as filmmaking um well let me start with the acting first with the acting I, it's just something that I've always wanted to do. I've always wanted to be able to entertain people and story tell. And I got into that probably like, you know, started really pursuing it 18, 19 years old and um, tried my hand in Austin, Texas for a little bit, mm -hmm. moved to Houston for a little while. Um, and then actually like went to New York for about a year. And here I am in California, I moved out here in 2009. And, um, you know, I didn't know a single person when I moved out here, not one. And man, I've been blessed to meet so many great people out here. I, I wouldn't be able to be making a lot of the films that I've had without the help and the generosity and the, the passion of so many people that I've met out here who helped me make my dreams come true, you know? So, so you find like location is uh, important and being able to pursue certain careers, like maybe Colleen didn't have uh, what you needed to push forward. So you had to, end up you know eventually end up in california yeah i think that's exactly it honestly because um i mean you can uh, you can correct mm -hmm. me if i'm wrong man but like you well, I, I think we had a, an awesome childhood in Colleen. Mm -hmm. um you know all of us we all had each other we all came from different backgrounds and stuff and all we ever wanted to do was just play and hang out and it was before the cell phone era you know so like yeah. we actually engaged with each other and we actually like um you know, spoke on the phone and saw each other in person and um and you know it was it was a great place to grow up you know we all went to middle school there we all went to high school there some college um but uh as i got older and you know became a young adult i i wanted to get my feet wet in the entertainment field and i i, I realized that colleen was not going to give me that um it wasn't going to give me what i wanted as far as my personal uh journey that i wanted to take so I, I had to leave. I mean, my family's there still. Good, a good portion of my friends are still there, but it's not a place that I can that I, I that I saw myself long term once I became an adult, you know. Um, and then when I lived in Austin for a little bit, uh, I did some work there, um, but it didn't really pop off like I wanted it to. And then I, when I was in Houston, same thing. I just couldn't quite find my niche out there, man. With um, in Texas with the entertainment field. I know that it has a good entertainment field, but me personally, I couldn't quite uh, get it going there. Um, and it wasn't until I moved, uh, you know, well, first to New York for a year, my cousin was gracious enough to let me stay with her for about a year. And while I did theater, um, studied theater, uh, did traveling theater company, did off Broadway. Um, that really opened my eyes to like, man, I need to be like, I need to be out in a, I, I need to, you know, I need to go somewhere where things happen. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, when I came here in 2009 with my brother-in-law, um, this is where I really started. This is where I, I need to be. Like, I meet so many people who are like-minded, like myself, who, um, you know, who are passionate, who are driven, ambitious, and 
just good people. And this is this is where I've this is where I've I've been able to get my footing as far as the film industry is going. Yeah, I agree. It's very important to find somewhere that accommodates what you're trying to do because you know when I was in Colleen uh, to like 29. I was making eleven dollars an hour working at that hotel. Mm -hmm. I remember I mean, <laughs> came here to you know the DFW area. Man, I'm making you know over six figures. So just that shift in location alone has been huge, man. Um, yeah, dude. I, I remember when you were at that hotel for the longest. And uh, was that the only place that you worked in in Killeen? Uh I used to work at McDonald's. Then I went to Subways. Subways. Uh, I remember Subway. <laughs> <laughs> I worked at like a pizzeria for a little bit. And then uh, the the hotel was like the last job I had before getting into coding. That's great, dude. I'm, I'm, I'm really proud of you, man, for making that leap. That's that's good. And six figures. That's, that's good. And you're doing what you love. You know, you've always talked about coding and programming and stuff like that. So Yeah, what's kind of interesting is I think we all had like little things in our childhood that we could see that would kind of lead us to the path that we're on. Like you were always like really creative. Like you could think of worlds in your head. Um, you know, you, you are always really into acting. And uh, you, as you mentioned before, you had this thing called Quest. If uh, Do you mind explaining what that is? Yeah, man. Uh, Quest is, it's, uh, it's basically a, like a role playing type game, sort of similar to Dungeons and Dragons, but just not quite as, um, it's not, like it, do, it doesn't have like the dice and, and all that stuff. There's a game master, kind of like Dungeons and Dragons, and then you have players who play the game. And again, this is cool that you, you know, you know exactly where it came from because you were one of the first, you know, like you were, you were among the first people who mm -hmm. experienced this and like, you know, like you would agree, like, this was um, this all started just sort of spitballing ideas, you know, just sitting around in a room. You know, there was no map, there was no backstories for characters. There was none of that. It was just like, hey, you want to play a game? All right, cool. And then I would set you up with a scenario. You would tell me what you do, and then we would just play off of each other for like you know, two, three, four hours. And um, so that's how it started. And then, you know, I started understanding that, damn, yeah, I, I need to. I need to expand and and make stories about this, you know. So I started writing out stories. I started making maps. Uh, I even wrote, I even made a strategy guide. I remember you. Uh, I remember you taking home the, the strategy guide one time to study it um, when when we were playing one time. I remember you said, uh, "Hey, can I can I hold this this strategy guide? Uh, I want to look see some of the items I want to buy on our next quest." I'm like, "Yeah, sure." And uh, so I would draw out books of characters and and things like that. And it just kept growing and growing the more people played. And um, once I moved out here, I and just some casual conversation, I mentioned Quest to one of my buddies who I worked with. And he got really interested in it. He goes, Hey, tell me more about it. You know, do you still have it? Do you have, I said, man, I haven't played it in years, but I still have all the books. I still have all the drawings. I still have the map. He goes, oh, dude, let's play. Let's play. You know, so me, him and another uh, friend of mine, we Kind of started playing through a walkie-talkie app on the phone because we're all just so busy you can't ever meet up like that but um and then the stories just kept going man it's like i never it's like i never stopped uh like like i said i hadn't played for years but then we picked up and it's like we had never stopped and i kept building on the ideas and it got more and more so to the point where i wanted to make films of it and uh and they were all in one of my buddies who was playing it just happens to be a filmmaker and uh and then we made three short films based off of this game. Uh, 2016, 2017, 2018, 18, we made three consecutive films that you can see right now on Amazon Prime. What, what is the name of the um, the film series? Uh, Windward Spirits. It's actually on my shirt here. W-I-N-D-W-A-R-D-S-P-I-R-I-T-S. Okay. Windward Spirits. And um, yeah, the first one is called uh, Windward Spirits, A New Ruler. The second one, Windward Spirits, Blood Ties. And then the third one, Windward Spirits, On Deadly Grounds. Okay, yeah, I actually have the trailer pulled up here. Um, let's, let's take a look at it. And uh, you, you could talk us through uh, some of it if, if you don't mind. Do you feel that? 
change. Elden Hadrix, my lord. Emissary to the great king, Dalestain of Fang. Yeah, man. So, uh, so that one is the first one. That one right there, it was a, um, you know, it was it was a big leap for me because I had never made my own film before, and um, prior to that, I had always just been act an, an actor. On this one now, I was now the creative head. You know, all decisions came through me. I did the casting of all the characters. I. Um, you know, I had a big, big say on the script, um, and you know, it was it was a very challenging experience. You know, we filmed at an actual castle in Hollywood. Um, the guy who owned it, he basically rents out his castle for music videos or um, short films, like we did, or weddings or whatever. And we were able to get a hold of him and film in the actual castle, and it was really, really cool. And uh, that was a one-day shoot. Um, started really early in the morning, went into the late afternoon and, uh, knocked it all out. And, uh, it was, it was really cool, man. It was, um, it was a great experience doing that one. So what was it like awesome. going from, uh, actor to, uh, you know, being a producer of the film? Like what, what did you have to change about your thinking in order to be successful as a, as a producer? Um, well, yeah, because like not only was I a producer, I was executive producer, which handles the budgeting. And that was interesting because, you know, you have a set um, margin of funds that you have. And then you have to figure out how to disperse those funds so that you stay in the budget. And that that goes like with paying each person. You have to uh, tally up what you're going to pay each person, how much you're going to pay for the location, how much you're going to pay for um costumes and props and all that stuff and that was a challenge but but oddly man i, I loved it i absolutely mm -hmm. loved um doing all that like you know prior to that i was never really i never really would consider myself an organized person but like when it came to making these films i was super organized with all all the tasks that i had to do and um it was really interesting sitting on the other side of the casting table as well, because I've always been just the actor in front. And now I'm sitting there watching people act like audition for me. And mm. it was, it was a weird feeling at first. I'm thinking to myself, man, this is, this is how I, this is how I act. I looked at it from a different light at that point. Like, um, it's, it's very different, very different. Just everything, you know, because like I said, ultimately I had to say, of everything from the script all the way down to what color is this character's uh, shoes going to be, you know, and everything in between. So you, you had to juggle a lot for, for that. And, but I, I was up to the challenge and I love it. So do you prefer like, because I know you do both, you still act and you also do the executive producing. Uh, is there any one that you prefer like more than the other or like both of them equally? Um. I'll be honest with you, man. Like it's my, my journey started out as just wanting to act and be an actor. But after like, now that I have all this going with my production company, Zuby productions, um, I actually prefer to be the producer. I still like to act like I'm in all the films that I make, I still act in them and I still put in as much effort as I ever have, but I still, but I, what I really like is having the creative control, mm -hmm. uh, of, doing what I want to do. And, you know, I have my partner, Jaleel, man, my, my producing partner, he's, um, him and I just, we see, we see eye to eye so much with so many things that I just love it to where when we shoot something, he'll come over to me and what do you think of this? And, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll look at it. We'll, we'll look at the playback on the camera and, um, you know, we'll, we'll just kind of hash out real quick what we want to, like what we want to change, what we like, what we don't like. And then we'll just keep doing it. It's just like, a, you know, it's like, like clockwork now working with with him and um and i just like that aspect of it you know i i like it but you know at the same time being an actor all you have to do is show up and do your thing and you can leave you know um that's the easy part but producer you gotta oversee everything 
I love it, man. I really do. I, I, I prefer producing, I think. Yeah, I, I could believe that because um, I, I, I see like producing really allowing you to fully express your creativity. Like you're not in somebody else's vision. You're bringing your own vision of life. And ever since you were young, like as we mentioned with Quest, um, you had like these worlds in your head. You had these stories like that took an insane amount of creativity. So being able to bring that to life, I can definitely see why you prefer uh, producing. So like uh, me, I personally never been like a creative person. Like where, where do you get these ideas for these stories? Like how do you come up with this stuff? Uh, I'm not sure, man. I, I Like I said, I was heavily influenced by a lot of the fantasy stuff that uh, I grew up with. Like uh, I just remember watching Conan Conan the Barbarian, uh, Conan the Destroyer. Those two films, as a kid, I probably was like, I don't know, five or six years old. And I remember just being so captivated by it, more so than the average person, I think. And um, I just love the, the fantasy value, like the swords and the mystical creatures. And um, I, I just loved all that. And then when I saw the Lord of the Rings cartoon as a kid, I thought that was amazing. Um, and then there was like Beastmaster, and then um, once Sega Genesis Super Nintendo came around when we were kids, that game Shining Force, um, Shining Force had, had a huge influence on me, man, because I was so enamored by the, uh, like, I, I think you and I were, were spending the night at a, a friend's house, Raymo and Marcel, and um, I remember that was the first time I'd seen Shining Force, and there was the... the game cartridge or the game case right there and i remember looking through the little booklet and seeing all the little every little character was was in the book and it had a description by each character and i remember loving the artwork on it and um and i was thinking to myself this is so cool man you know i and all these ideas just started flooding my brain of like how we how i can present some sort of um creativity for you all for the print for my friends and something that could be our own thing and you know like I said in another in another interview man I had been sitting on, on windward like the the quest aspect of it for for a long time before I actually said you guys want to play quest like it was kind of a spur of the moment thing to everybody else but in my head I was building up for it for months like how, how can I like throw this at my buddies to where we can play something like this and they won't think it's weird or, you know, uh, and it, it kind of, kind of worked out. And then I think, you know, as, as much as anyone, I'm a big, like growing up in the military life, we lived in so many different places, finally, finally settling down in Killeen. But prior to that, we had lived in, you know, Germany, Colorado, Louisiana, back in Germany so many different nationalities of people and cultures of people. I've always appreciated that. And um, I, I love learning about other people's heritage and, and cultures. And I like to incorporate, incorporate that into my game with all the different types of races and, and uh, species and nationalities of people. I think that left an impact on me also, like having so many different diverse group of friends and um kind of you know pushing using that in my game do you have like a like a process that you go about like when creating these things like first i'm going to start with the world then i'm going to create the character then i'm going to create the story or is it more so just freestyling and kind of going with whatever your mind takes you with how i go about the game itself um i'll have a set scenario that i want to present to the players um but i won't know exactly how it's going to go until we play because the players can alter how it how it ends up um mm -hmm. like uh i never had a set script on anything with this game you know i would have like i have a handful of ideas in my mind of what i wanted to uh of what, of what i wanted to present in this particular storyline um and then once we would start playing I would throw it at you guys or like the players and they would maybe do something that I wasn't expecting. So then I would have to kind of quickly go in my head and be like, okay, um, you know, let's flip, let's, let's change this up. Let's throw a twist in there. Let's do this. Let's do that. And so the players sort of shape this game 
you know, just as much as, as me, like I present it all to everybody mm -hmm. um, and, and it's ever changing, but the players ultimately sort of dictate in many ways how, how it's going to go. Um, and some of the world events that happen in the game, you know, are affected solely by the players, which is pretty cool in itself. Okay. Yeah. Um, you also mentioned your, your business partner, Jaleel. Um, like how, how does that relationship work? Are you more of the creative force and he's more of the business mind or is it just kind of a mixture of both? Um, mixture of both. Like Jaleel and I, man, we, we met about almost 10 years ago. We both work for Disney. Um, he found out that I had a, he found out that I had a small part in the dark Knight rises. Um, and he's a Batman fanatic, and he overheard that. He overheard me talking to talk, talking about it to somebody, and him and I just started talking, and he was like blown away by it. And he goes, "Man, I'm going to school for film, dude." He goes, "We should do something someday." I'm like, "Yeah, we should." And for whatever reason, man, it, and you know how it is, like mm -hmm. when you say, "Yeah, we need to do this." Yeah, for sure, let's do that. Mm -hmm. And years go by, and years go by, and you never do it. Mm -hmm. um, that's how it was with him and I, where. Um, we kept talking about doing something together, but for whatever reason, something would always kind of interrupt it or, you know, uh, some sort of life event or whatever. And then finally, man, it was right before COVID came 2019. Uh, I was at a point where I was a little discouraged, maybe, um, wasn't really feeling like myself. And then I was talking with him and he was, in, he was feeling exactly how I was. And, uh, I said, Jaleel, dude, I said, we need to do something, man. Like, we need to do something. And and now he goes, hey, man, I'm, I'll, I'll never forget it. Like, he looked at me and he was just like, write something and we'll shoot it. And, like, something in the way he said it was different than all the other times. And I said, okay, I will. And then I wrote um, my short film, Rum Runners, which is on YouTube. You can see that at Zuby Productions. It's a prohibition short. I've always loved the 1920s prohibition. And I wrote it. Um, we brought my buddy Pete Freeland as a producer. We brought him on board. He was a producer with us. And um, and we we shot it in the midst of COVID, man. We shot it in February um, 2021, last year. And, um, and that was still like kind of at the height of a lot of COVID scares and lock, a lot of things were still locked down, you know, and we were able to get it done. And um, that was... Man, once we shot Rum Runners, we were off and running. Like, he would have an idea for something. I'd be like, okay, write it up. And, you know, he would he, he wrote his first feature just recently. But um, but we talk a lot. Him and I talk a lot about different storylines. And so we both have that creative aspect. But he is a director um, at heart. I'm, I'm not a director. I'm, you know, producer, actor, writer, with all, all the other things. I'm everything but a director pretty much, but he is a director, but he's also uh, got a creative mind and he's a photographer as well. Um, he has great work that you can see on his Instagram page. Um, but that's how our business relationship is, man. Like we talk almost daily. We send text messages about, Hey, I think for this scene on this upcoming film, we should do this. Um, or, Hey, um, you know, for this, particular scene i think we need this and this and this and this like we're always talking we're always hyping each other up too because as a creative person man um it's it's a little taxing on the mind mm -hmm. uh, there's times where i really do feel down um I, I struggle sometimes with with myself um with different things but when you have people around you that support you and, and love you like my, you know, my wife, you know, she's always there to kind of pick me up. My parents are there to pick me up. Jaleel is there to pick me up. You know, we, um, you know, you, you get back on track and you keep going, you know, but it's a struggle, man. It's a struggle like having the creative thing it really is. Can you, can you speak on the importance of like just doing it? Because, you know, we've all kind of been in that phase where we're like, yeah, I, I got this idea. I'm, I'm thinking about it. And, you know, years just passed, like you mentioned, and nothing gets done. So how important was it to just get started and not try to make it perfect? Just get it out there. Uh, I think it's it's hugely important, man. Like and, and I would stress that to people like people have asked me, you know, 
because uh, I know some some younger uh, filmmakers who you know they they've hit me up on Instagram or or even in, at work or whatever, and they'll be like, "Hey man, you know I saw your film, I love it. You know I want to make my own stuff. You know what do you suggest?" And this and that. I'm like, just you 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 just have to do it, man. Like, and especially now getting older, um, I you know I've I've had the unfortunate you know burden of having people I know who are young pass away. Mm. Um, and it's like, you know, life is so short, man. When you just look at everything, it's just so short. And it's like, why not do it now? Why not do something now that's going to leave a mark? That's going to inspire people. That's going to, um, make somebody who's coming up be like, dude, you know, he did that. I want to do something like that. You know, like, um, it's just, it's hugely important if you have an idea and it's so important also, man, the company you keep, you know, mm -hmm. like that's, so, that, that, that's hugely important in, in my opinion. Like, you know, if you're around a bunch of people who are just not really doing much of anything, just, you know, partying all the time or whatever, like not, not that there's anything wrong with that, but I'm just saying like, if that's their, their whole goal in life is just to like hang out, you're not going to get much done, man. I mean, it's just going to, it's going to eventually wear off on you without you realizing it. So like, I just love being around people who, who are out there doing stuff, who are making moves, who are, um, you know, they have an idea and they want to, they want to do something with it. I'm like, all right, let's collaborate, man. Let's, let's do something with it, you know, because like I said, life is just so short. So yeah, you kind of mentioned uh when we're spirits, rum runners, and you also have uh, another movie series, correct? Yeah, we, we just filmed it in July of this year. Um, it's called New Prophecy. That's also on our YouTube channel. It's, we've made part one and part two. Um, those are two films that I wrote, um, executive produced and acted in. Um, and uh, those, it's it's just like a thriller. Like uh, I've, I've always been interested in like the, uh, the mystery thriller type things where like, you know, something that potentially could happen, like, you know, secret organizations or whatever, like, um, so, uh, Jaleel and I, we, we filmed those two. We filmed the first one in October of last year. And then this one, um, July of, of this past month or yeah, or July, but, um, yeah, man, that, that was, uh, that was a fun one to shoot also. Like a lot of people think it's scary when they see the trailers or whatever, but it's, it's more of a, like a, a thriller type. So you actually have the trailer right here. Um, let me, let me pull this up. I was new prophecy prophecy uh so that that's vastly different than when we're spirits uh did you intentionally like try to challenge yourself and go into a whole new uh universe pretty much or? yeah man uh definitely um <clears throat> and just like rum runners is, is very different as well like um uh, wanted to just try other things i didn't i didn't want to i don't want to just solely focus everything on windward um I want to expand on Windward for sure and keep it going, but um, I, I wanted to challenge myself in a more modern, uh, modern storyline. And um, like I said, I just love, uh, I'm not sure where it comes from, but I just like, you know, kind of dark stories, um, stories that make you think, stories that, you know, make people kind of think to themselves, oh man, that something like that really could happen, you know? So, um, so yeah, that was, that's 
part one of uh, of New Prophecy on that one. So your your films have actually been uh, winning awards, and you've been kind of like promoting them at festivals. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Um, yeah, the, we we've been in, we've been involved in quite a few um, uh, film festivals, that, like all all around the world too, which is pretty awesome, man. We actually had a film festival um, contact us from India. Um, mm. They saw Rum Runners and um, they wanted us, but it, but it was like super late notice, man. They, they contacted us maybe, I don't know, two or three weeks before the festival saying that we were invited to India to uh, to attend this festival, that they were going to premiere it at, you know, like, at a live theater. And I was just like, that's freaking cool, man. But there's no way I can just up and go to India. Um, but uh, yeah, and you know, we've had all of all of our films that we've made with the exception of um, New Prophecy, because it just, it's kind of new, um, have been premiered at the Chinese theater in Hollywood um, mm. with Indie Night. It's a film festival called Indie Night. They're a great festival, man. Um, a guy named Dave Brown runs it. He, um, you know, it, and it's really cool, man, because, you know, you get to invite as many people as you want. You go to the Chinese theater right there in the heart of Hollywood of everything. And then, um, you know, you, you see your work on the big screen, which has a completely different feel to it, man. Like you're sitting there looking at the big screen. You're like, man, we, we did this, you know, like it's, it's, uh, it's really a, a, a surreal feeling. And then afterwards, the whole cast and crew goes on stage and um, does a Q and A, which I also love, you know, it, and it's funny too, man, because growing up, I've always dreaded public speaking and, you know, getting up in front of people and stuff and, and, uh, uh, you know, getting into acting and doing all this, this has completely broken me out of that to where I can talk openly about all this stuff and be totally fine, man. But, you know, so uh, I think acting also helped in that regard with my, my shyness. So, but anyways, that's kind of going off course here. But yeah, we, we were uh, involved in quite a few um, film festivals. Thank God, like we've, we've won quite a few awards. Um, you can see, you can actually see the awards that we won on the Rum Runners Instagram page at Rum Runners the movie, and then um, on the Windward Spirits, it's on the website. It shows some of the awards that we won for those films as well. So it's it's been it's been great. So like interacting with the uh, the people that love your movies, have you gotten any interest in comments from them? Like, hey, I was really inspired. Uh, yeah, yeah, man. Uh, particularly with Windward Spirits because there's there's people that i've met who they have their they may have their own little um uh like specific story that they want to tell you know that doesn't necessarily have to be fantasy it's more like you know if they have a story that they want to tell about um you know a western or a crime series or a romantic comedy or whatever um they see they saw what i what i've done with winward in terms of its humble beginnings all the way up into like, you know, um, this little kind of cult following of, uh, of films that, that I've put together. And, you know, that some of them have told me, it's like, man, you know, I've been having these ideas in the back, on the back of my mind for years, man. And, you know, seeing you do this with Winward, I think that's pretty awesome. And, and it helps me, man, to be honest with you. Like, I love to hear uh, that people are inspired to do their own thing, whatever it may be. Um, and I, I, love, I genuinely love hearing that. That's one of the things that, that drives me with this. Uh, you know, it's not not so much about the money uh, at all, really. It's 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 about leaving something behind. Um, you know, and just, especially with my kids, man. I have an 11 year old daughter and an eight year old son, and both of them they love my films, man. Like. Um, <laughs> They'll sit there and watch him like my, my little boy. He'll, you know, you, you want to watch Windward? You want? And I, you know, maybe it's my vanity, but I don't like watching myself. But I'll watch it with him for the sake of him. You know, like he wants to see it, and uh, and I think that's cool because it's something he'll remember forever. You know, they'll remember forever is is that part of it. Like no matter what they choose to do in their life, they'll know that you can do what what you want if you set out to it to do it. Yeah, it's, it's really amazing, man. Like we both have to kind of overcome a lot of challenges, especially with getting out in front of the public. Like, 
you know, with me personally, I, I don't think anybody would have uh, believed that I'll be having like a podcast because I really hated talking, you know. So, and yeah, you know, I, I, I was I'm, I was telling Josh about you the other day with, with your podcast. I was like, man, I, you know what? Uh, Kevin and me are trying to get together with, uh, with the podcast thing. And we were talking about how cool it is that you have this this platform for yourself, man, because you're right. Like 10 years ago or so, I would have never thought that you would have a, a, a podcast. And I think it's great what you're doing. And you, you know, you, you speak really well, you have some cool guests and I think it's awesome, dude. Oh man, appreciate it, man. And I'm really glad to see that you're doing a lot of big things, man. Uh, like what, what, what are some of the things you got coming up for the future? Um, well, we, this, uh, I'm sorry, what's, what are we in September? Um, October, uh, beginning of October, we're going to film, um, a feature film uh, written by Jaleel. I'm producing it. Um, uh, a couple other friends of ours are producing. We're, we're labeled as producers as well. Uh, we're shooting a, a feature film that Jaleel wrote. He's really excited to get it going. Um, it'll be his first feature. It'll be my first time being a producer on a feature. And um, so we're looking to film that for a couple weeks in October. And then Later on in October, we're looking to film something else, Windward Spirits related, um, that you know we're we're kind of keeping a lid on at the moment with what we want to do with it. But, but we're uh, definitely going to film something uh, Windward um, based in in the month of October. We already have everything kind of laid out. There's just a few little little minor things we need to take care of before we're you know all systems go, but you know, that's that's the plan at the moment. Oh man, that's um, that's definitely great, man. Um, and don't you also have a board game that you're working on? Oh yeah, sorry, forgot. Um, so uh, Windward, um, something that I like with with Windward Spirits is the fact that you know I can kind of just create whatever I want to create with it, whether it's a shirt, whether it's um, drawings, whether it's uh, you know if I want to make a hat at some point. But I also uh, put in a bunch of, uh, a lot of effort and work on a board game, a Windward Spirits board game that I'm hoping to get off the ground, um, maybe get a Kickstarter going or something to try to get some funding to, to get it moving. But um, I created a board game of Windward Spirits. Mm -hmm. And um, here, let me just kind of show here on the camera if you can see it. But this is the prototype. This is obviously the board is not going to look like this. Oh, wow. But as you can see, you know, it's got all the different terrain and things like that. And your character basically goes through this board and gets to the end. Um, like you have to get a wizard safely to the end of the, uh, and the, to the end of the game with all these different creatures and other players trying to take the wizard from you. And you have to be able to hold on to them all the way to the end, only one person can win. And then um, that's that's the gist of the game. Actually, there's a really detailed um, description and a lot of cool photos of this game and the characters on the Windward Spirits website, which is windwardspirits.net. What made you uh, want to get into creating a board game? Um, well, I, I love board games as it is. And Hero Quest, uh, I'm not sure if you remember that one. But uh, mm -hmm. we used to play that at, at our buddy Raymond Marcel's house. But um, it was a fantasy-based board game, and that sort of kicked it off for me. I was like, man, this is so cool. Because in that game, in Hero Quest, there was a game master who sets up um, how how the, the board is going to be set, and the players move along, and going, they're going through a dungeon, basically. And then you go, they go into different rooms, and the game master decides what's in the room, what, in each room. So that kind of like that always stuck in my head with uh, hero quest and um my buddy josh our buddy josh you know mm -hmm. he's time and time again he's like man dude you ever thought about making this into a board game or you know a comic book or, or something and it would always be kind of one of those things where i'd say yeah you know maybe 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 one day one day and then um jaleel and me once again <laughs> keep bringing up jaleel but we made a winward spirits documentary um, that you can see on my YouTube channel, Zuby Productions. It's public for everyone to see. Um, we made a documentary in February of this year 
And uh, I discussed a little bit about that. Like I remember Jaleel really pushing for me also. He was like, man, dude, you should, you should look, you look into a board game. And not even a month or two later, I bought this big board. I started drawing out some stuff and it just, it turned into that. What you saw, all those trees and rocks and, you know, there's little animals all over the place. It's like, it doesn't really show it justice, man. Or like, you know, photos don't really do it justice. But anyways, that's, that's all just, so I play this game constantly with my kids. They always want to play. There's nine characters to choose from right now. Um, and some of those characters are uh, characters that you're probably familiar with from mm -hmm. when we were kids, man. So, but I made them into actual action figures. And like I said, you can see them all on, on windwardspirits.net on the board game section in the menu. Is that a dice based board game? Yep. Dice. Um, you, you run into different creatures. And then when you get to that creature, um, you know, you battle with dice, but each character has their own little special ability and you roll what's called a chance dice. And if you roll the chance dice and you roll a certain number, you're able to perform your special ability. But if you don't, you have to just fight normal. So, um, yeah, man, it's, it's a whole, it's, a, it's all the rules and stuff, man. It's, it's got a whole system breakdown to it. Oh man. Yeah. It seems like you're doing really big things, man. Um, Try yeah, bro. Try <laughs> Yeah, keep it up, man. Um, are there are they like any challenges that, you know, like maybe you want to have more visibility or, you know, on your project? Are there like any challenges that you're facing right now that, you know, you're still working to overcome? Yeah, man, always. Um, there's always going to be challenges, that's for sure. I think the main one is just trying to get um, trying to get more eyes on our work, you know. I think that's that's the main thing is, um, you know, obviously if you're a creator, if you're a content creator, if you're a filmmaker, whatever, you want as many people to see your work as possible. You know, not everybody's going to like it, um, but you still want people to see it, you know, get mm -hmm. people talking about it. Um, and, you know, that's a little bit of a struggle sometimes, especially, you know, with social media, you just never quite know what's going to catch, um, mm -hmm. you know, like you post something and you're thinking in your mind, okay, this is probably going to be pretty good and it ends up getting like you know 10 views or something you're like oh boy that didn't that didn't pan out like i wanted it to. um but uh you know I'm, i am grateful for the people who do follow my our work my work um with winward with the films that we've made um you know that little core group of supporters man i'm, I'm forever forever grateful for them but you know it would be awesome to be able to reach a broader audience as much as we can and to get other influencers, you know, to, to see our, to see our stuff, you know, um, we put so much work into what we do. It would just be cool to get more, uh, more eyes on it. You know, the more people that can see it, the more chance you have to inspire someone. Yeah, man. Vis getting visibility is tough, man. Like the algorithm, it's almost like a game in and of itself. You can't just have a great product, put it out and people come to it. It's like, you got to exactly. play the game mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah, I, I face the same thing with this podcast, man. Uh, you know, most people that see it, like, oh, yeah, that's great content. But, you know, for the longest, for like six or seven months, all of our videos have been having like one or two views. So it's only yeah. recently that we've kind of broken into the algorithm and become more visible. Like, do you have any strategies for uh, increasing your visibility? Man, I just, uh, I get on every, uh, every, social media platform that I'm on to promote my stuff. Um, or I'll, I'll, I'll hit up some of my friends and be like, Hey man, can you do me a favor? Share this on your, you know, Facebook, share this on your Instagram. And it has, that does work sometimes, but, um, you know, sometimes it doesn't like, I, mm -hmm. I don't, it's, it's really bizarre, man. I haven't quite figured it out yet. The whole algorithm thing. And, um, you know, I hear, I hear so many, there's so many different people that tell you different strategies, like post at this time on this mm -hmm. day, you know, and you'll give you'll up your views or, um, don't ever post on like a Saturday night because everybody's, you know, doing something and nobody's going to see your stuff and it'll get lost in the algorithm, you know, or like you know, just different things like that, man. And I've tried it all. And sometimes something hits and sometimes it just doesn't. And, um, and sometimes, you know, the, the, the things that you really want to hit, yeah, sometimes 
never do anything. And then the things that you're just kind of like, whatever, I'll just post this. And that ends up going, well, you know, that ends up getting 100, 300, 400 views. You're like, how did that even get out there? <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah, I find like, yeah, it's, it's kind of like almost like just punching, you know, buying a lottery ticket. Like each video you put out, you're just giving yourself a shot. You don't know which one is going to hit. But, That's right. Like, you know, I know you used to do like a lot of skits back in the day, man, with, with platforms like TikTok. Do you think like maybe if you you had that when you were young that maybe you would have blown up, like making short skits on TikTok or, you know? Yeah, I think I think uh, <laughs> a lot of what we did back in the day, I think, would, would, would be successful now with everything that's out there, man. Because, yeah, you're right. We used to do uh, we used to do skits all the time and uh, we used to die laughing at, at so many of them um yeah tiktok was around back then man there's no telling there's no telling but um but where i'm at now dude like i mean i have a tiktok at zuby productions um i should be on it more, i should be on it more than than what i am i don't check it as often as i check the other ones um but uh i you know i hear that that's a good spot to, to get your stuff going um, but you know, doing, doing little skits and things like that, that's just, I don't know, man, that's just not really what yeah. I want to be doing, you know, like it's, it, it's not, I, I, I see some great skits on there. A lot of them are funny, but me personally, I just, it's just not, I don't know. Um, yeah. it's more into like the actual producing of the moves, like uh, longer form content, not just like little yeah. skits. Not just a, I just don't want a viral video. I, I want like stuff that's going to be mm -hmm. long lasting. You know? Right. Yeah, that definitely makes sense, man. I know, uh, you know, it's getting to the top of the hour, and I know you have to head on now, man. Uh, did you have any final thoughts to leave with the audience? Um, I mean, just kind of going back to what I said earlier. You know, if if you if you have anything that you want to uh, really accomplish man like if you have something that's just been lingering in your mind something you want to just get out there just just do it you know just don't wait and watch the company you keep that I'm, I'm telling mm -hmm. you that's, that's so important man once i got rid of some people that were toxic in my life um i really did see a difference i know it sounds maybe a little cliche or cheesy but it's it really is um it, it really does work having the people around you that, that are going to help push you and inspire you. And then, um, once again, man, I'm just, I'm so proud of you, dude, like, of, uh, for having this, this platform here. And whenever this comes out, I'll share it, you know, hopefully get more views on it. And, uh, thank you again for having me. I'm glad we were finally able to collaborate on something we, we've been yeah. talking about for years also. A long time, man. <laughs> But yeah, man, thank you for coming on um, and to the audience. And y'all, please like, share, and subscribe. And I'm going to post a link to Raphael's stuff. Y'all definitely check it out. But on that note, we'll catch y'all next time. Peace.